for keeping it KBC Channel One, and I'm just about to have a sit down with a great woman in this particular country, a true advocate of women's rights, who has championed so much that we have achieved as a country when it comes to the inclusion of women, and just making sure that women have a voice and women have a space to within within which they, they can maximize their potential. I'm talking about none other than Miss Rehab Mwekali Mwiu. Uh, she's the current national chairperson of the Maendeleo Ya Wanawake organization, but it's a position that she has held after having played several pivotal roles, uh, having served as the chairperson of the African Center for Empowerment, Gender and Advocacy. Uh, Rehab is also a renowned Kenyan entrepreneur and has been instrumental in empowering Kenyan women economically. She has experience in matters, policy advocacy, and also community mobilization and engagement. And I can go on and on about her rich profile, but she's with me here tonight just to shed some light on how that journey has been for her. And of course, the way forward for women inclusion in our country. Thank you for creating time for us tonight. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so you sit on a very powerful position as the national chairperson of Maendeleo Yawanawake, which just marked its 70th anniversary. How does it feel and what major milestones do you celebrate as an institution? The Kenyan women took Maendeleo seriously. And the journey of 70 years would have not happened without the leadership of the 12 of the chairs who have been there before me. There are times we suffered and maybe we were put under commissions that was 1995 to about 1990. We lost five years. I credit where we sit today to the chair who was Mrs. Jane Keanu and our long-standing patron for about that seven years. She was the chair when this building was happening. And I give a lot of respect as I give the other leaders. And as we look forward to now doing a second Bindelio House within our 70 years in Mombasa, a Sanjeda Peace Violence Centre, we will be looking at this building because if it wasn't there, if we didn't have these offices, we would have not continued to be who we are today. So we thank our predecessors. Bindelio has worked on both socially, political and economically. Pretty well we've done in, uh, in the political pillar because most of the leaders in this country, starting with our then uh, founder, Mama Phoebe who came in in 1958, in her words, and that's what we were trying to do this particular time, when they went to see the founding father, they spoke about 50-50. One of the things they did, they went to Kapenguria as women. They carried the wimpy for porridge. They carried them their flowers. And, and they were so touched, they carried vegetables. And they argued for 50-50. So this started many years ago. What did we get out of that? We got Priscilla Boa to go to, 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 to Lancaster. To, you know, when the constitution was being made, we got all the affirmative action seats. Most of the girls in parliament, our sisters, many of them, whether it is by the Moko, whether it is Jared Ngilo, Mother Kaloa, in our own words, is a daughter of a mind, a mother. Many, you can't mention the list. The year came from through my endelio systems. But I'd just like to look at that journey again of 70 years. Must have come with a lot of challenges. What would you cite as one of the most difficult moments you've had as an institution that maybe took you back on the progress you are making to achieve all that you have achieved? My time has been about eight years by next month. Had a lot of challenge when I came in. Because when you come with a clear agenda, then there are the people sometimes you've come and with the people out there who want to kill that agenda. I'm sure today you know what my agenda was in this empowerment. And I had a lot of challenges. I was even taken to court, a case we just won uh, this year. For six years we were in court. But this is part of it. When the Lord allows you to go through pain, there's something out there. And I think I, I'm, I'm enough of a Christian. I understand a bit of what faith is about. So perseverance is what also is going to help us. So my law is informed by the fact that even if we have had challenges, we've been very fortunate. There are many NGOs who do not sit in offices like this. We're very lucky. Somebody did the sacrifice, as I said. Somebody made sure these offices are running. So we are not paying rent. So when you sit in these very comfortable offices, as you can see, what do you give back? To the society so it uh, then you, you you as the leader you must ask yourself what is this missing link what do i need to do then that informed my i must thank god that i traveled a lot also and 
There are things I've seen out there in the world which I felt, having worked with grassroots women, this is probably the way we need to go, but this is with the board I have, this is with the membership I have, because we devolved Mandeleo from these offices. There was, there was a season that um, Mandeleo Yawanawake got uh, attracted a lot of attention courtesy of the leadership wrangles that uh, it was going through as an institution. Many even went to the extent of asking whether the institution is still alive or it is, is it dead, is it even there? Mm. I, I mean, how did you deal with these um, you know, challenges that you're facing and is Mandeleo still as strong as the Mandeleo Yawanawake that it was back then? I do not think 70 years is a small thing for Mandeleo. Leaders come in with their own, uh, you know, with their own agendas, with their own visions. So sometimes, as I said, we went into a commission that was in the 80s. Uh, I think it depends on the leaders and there was a time that you have to be very careful, am I supporting, uh, to be supported by donors, I must walk this path. To believe in the country and the government, and that is where my time is. I, I think I don't. I don't. I didn't say that we do not. We haven't attracted a lot of donor support, but we've been very clear that this is a Kenyan women institution. We have a job to be done with our government. We are like a quasi government agency. That is where we started, and that is exactly where we are going back. That is a conscious decision I made because for me to be able to reach all those counties and know where the issues are that we are getting girls giving birth at 10 years and what we need to do, we need to partner with the government. Because we and government are sisters, we, this is our country, and I didn't believe somebody from out there will come and understand us more than uh, the Kenya government would understand us. So we then developed this issue of working with the Office of the First Lady, and we really thank her. We did the Build Zero with her, we did the marathons, and then, of course, His Excellency the President has been able to support us, including the trips we are doing now. It was courtesy of him supporting us financially. As to when Mindelio and a bigger voice than today, sometimes I think. Uh, I don't think I want to buy that because when then it was that loud, what did it do? Which it is not doing today. Because there are people who really want to be in the media and there are people who want to work in, work in the background such that by the time I come out, then you can ask me, what have you been doing? Then I'll tell you I've been doing a national water harvesting project. We started in 2019, so leaders are different. So I probably may look like I really want to be in the media, but that's not me. So um, what is it that would you'd cite as your priority areas, just the three priority areas as you mark 70 that you haven't done in the last a couple of years? We are looking at the leaders who are going to come into government that we want to be their partner we want to look at the leaders the women reps the women members of parliament the deputy president coming in a woman what is this we can do for this country so the other thing is that uh, the boy child is our child We've started a program with the Bishop Ogide on, Mayo on, on positive masculinity. We are going to be carrying it forward. We need to be in this country. And because Mandela has so many leaders from the ward to the sub-county to the county to where we are, all led from the Secretary and us here, we need to go out into the counties. And also, I'll be calling on the old teachers to come and help us even as we call our leaders because there is a job here in this country to be done of values. We cannot afford to have children in the streets in the 21st century, whether it is Nairobi or in Mombasa. And this is a country with issues of widowed women going through a lot of uh, stress when their husbands are not there. The single mother, sometimes not by choice. A partner may just die or you never got married, you have children. It's a family with the women who have also been divorced and they have families to take care of. So there is a lot Mandela is going to be dealing with. So our three is values and the next one is going to be values and number three is going to be family. All right. So I want us to talk about the gender agenda and um, just describing what the 20, uh, promulgation of the 2010 constitution did is what many have cited as a new dawn for women. I don't know what you'd, uh, uh, you know, would be your sentiments about the two-thirds gender promise. What is it that it was seeking to fix? And looking at it many years down the line, are we there? I would want to say this, it will be good to actualize the two-thirds. So we are looking forward. We saw how many women, I think about 97, have made it as MCS. Majority of them will be calling on political parties to truly and sincerely be able to nominate women. This is what we are going to be calling. However, we would have expected a lot of support from the donor world in supporting trainings and civic education and all this. Some are lacking and time is not on our side. So. We hope and we are very happy that uh, Right Honourable former Prime Minister has been able to give us a woman. We feel like just right there, we've got enough 50-50.
Before we get to that, um, you know, the 11th Parliament, the 12th Parliament failed to pass the two-thirds gender principle. There was a case by the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission um, seeking to uh, make it ob uh, to obligate political parties to ensure the two-thirds gender principle is observed in their political party listing, which was quashed again. I mean, where do you think the problem is? Do you think there's a genuine intention to, to pass this bill or there could be something else? I am not very good in dealing with negative issues. I, I like being positive. What has not happened has not happened. We are here celebrating a woman chief justice, right? We are here celebrating a woman deputy president coming in, right? So all we can do is give it our very best, you media, ourselves, that we now advocate and we continue doing it now as we go into elections and calling on women to be able to elect women by mind. Leopolda Raida women of integrity because that is what will form this country but going forward we hope that uh, there's going to be a very cautious decision made here around the two thirds because we shouldn't be where we are but we don't want to miss the excitement of a woman deputy president also because that makes us feel 50 50 right now and once we are on that table i think the rest is going to follow you are part of those who are agitating for this to happen for uh, the front runners to consider a woman as they are running mate maybe it would be prudent to ask why was this important and how does it make you feel now that at least uh, Martha Karua is on that particular ticket. I feel great. The day she was nominated, if you go to your clips, you interviewed me down there. I could not even go to KICC. I honestly, because I am a mother and I've given birth, as I waited, I felt that feeling of waiting to get a child. I could not move out of this place. It has been an extremely humbling experience. I don't know God has done it for us. We cannot leave God Almighty into this. On this desk, we were going to Mount Kenya. It was the second celebration. I sat down and I called Honorable Mother Karua. I called Mama Mary Wambui. I called Priscilla Nyokabi. I called Sabina Chege. I invited all of them, Karugo. And Mother calls me on Sunday. I was in my upcountry home. And she says, Rehab, I got your letter. And I'm coming. And Mother comes. And I just make an announcement. Because we have been feeling as mind leo. This lot, we need to talk about it. If my predecessors, my Mama Phoebe, did it in 1960, surely if God has given us life to be 70 and we are in office today, the most honorable thing to do is to campaign for the truth, as you are telling me, is to talk about the girl child and the issues we are having. It is also to say we are ready for a woman deputy president. I made this announcement, and like 2,000 women, and I said, we have Mother Karoa here. And we are asking Nikasema Baba, now my president, President Kenyatta, if you can consider. I didn't even remember Mother was not Kenya, by the way, because I'm Jubilee. I did an announcement. It was breaking news from all of you, and from that day, we went to Machakos for the Eastern Block. We had from a Sabit all the way. I invited her. She came as a chief guest. She actually flew in. I saw the response, like 2,000 women. But it is until we went to Eldoret, and I had 14 counties, and the reception I saw in Eldoret, in my own heart of hearts, there was something speaking. So because we're running out of time for this, I just want to know, in your assessment of how the ground has shifted in the 2022 general election when it comes to the number of women who are coming out to vie for different political seats, what are you reading? The justification is we have one of us now nominated at the top. If there is anything former Prime Minister has done for the Kenyan women is to tell us, I see you, I hear you, I have Mama Aida with me who has also been in the women movement and I believe in you and I'll give one of you to come and work with me. That alone has been the game changer. You've seen governors including Kinamutula, young people, Kinakuria, everybody's going for a woman. So what Baba has done, and we must respect that man, and we must give him this vote. What he has done is to say, I confirm that a Kenyan woman is capable. A Kenyan woman can do it. And I have one of you to walk with me this journey. And at this juncture, I want to thank Charity Gilu in a very special way. She has been bigger than herself and this nation. She's been able to step aside and to even support her sister when she was there in it like her. And Charity, my sister, we thank you as we thank Martha. Those who oppose uh, the two-thirds gender rule would say, you know, women have the f uh, 47 slots for women representative reserved for them. So leave these other ones for, for the men. What is your comment on that? 
We fought for 47 slots. I was, uh, I think I was a national vice chair or a provincial chair. And I actually remember we were with Kinama Maida, we went to City Hall, and we had a meeting there. And we all moved to Parliament to ask our member, main members of Parliament to support the 47. And who was in Naivasha? Charity Ngilo, Mother Karua. In Naivasha was Charity and Mother Karua and Kidamutula Kelonzo. They walked out and they said, we are, you must give us the 47 seats. We got those seats courtesy of those two ma mothers. And so what am I saying? Those seats were fought for very hard. And what is, if we have a parliament of 400 and something, what is wrong with the 47 seats belonging to women? Men have all the other spaces to go and fight for. And I want it to be on record. Mandeleo believes in family. We have absolutely nothing. Men are our partners. What I think we need to look at when, Should they be after given we more win. than just the 47? Oh, yes, absolutely. That's why we want a deputy president. And believe you me, we'll be going for presidency. You know, now we have just started. So, yes, they need to be governors. They want to be deputy governors. But can and we women of Kenya lead with very high integrity so that the future will judge us very fairly. As we close this, um, as part of your parting shot, what do you think needs to be done to achieve a satisfactory representation of women in leadership positions? We will talk more after elections, but I think I'll be calling on the nation. Where you think you have women who are standing, you know them, please give them the vote. And where also you have men, and we have men friends and some brothers who are standing, please also give them the vote. This country is for all of us. Just like we share homes, let us also share in the governors of the country, Kenya. And we will be saying this with a lot of humility, and where we miss it even in these videos, forgive us. We mean well, and we mean well for this country, Kenya. And may the good Lord bless all of us. Thank you so much. Uh, Sandy, Sandy. Thank you for creating uh, time for us tonight. That is uh, Miss Rahab Muyu, the national chairperson of the Mendeleo Yawanawake organization, just speaking to us about the journey that the organization has taken 70 years since it was established. And of course, the way forward, even as we head to the 2022 general election, what needs to be done to ensure that we achieve women inclusion in leadership. My name is Safina Ching Oma. Thank you for watching. Have a good night. Thank you very much.